Frank, when it comes to making the line for the Preakness Stakes, how much do you emphasize what you saw in the Kentucky Derby? Quite a bit. I, mean, I think one of my better points is I listen, I, I watch, I hear what people are saying. I'll, I'll study, you know, overseas sports books to see what odds they have in the race. You know, I'll come up with my line on my own, but I, I, you know, look to as many sources as I can get. I think the more info you have, and obviously it starts with the running of the Derby and the chart and what people are saying uh, coming out of the Derby. It weighs into it uh, very heavily. When it comes to handicapping the Preakness, then not the same as putting your line together, obviously. What kind of things are you looking for in a horse coming out of the Derby coming to the Preakness? Generally, you know, well, obviously any horse with a trouble line, but generally there's always one or two that everyone migrates to. But if you look at the Preakness, save for last year, which wasn't one of the cases, the public has just been incredibly on target. The two to one, five to two shot that gets the attention in the Preakness wins. I mean, it's in, it's probably one of the most formful races over time, certainly on that scale of a race that, that we've had in, in the country. Frank, the stereotype when we come to Pimlico for the Preakness is tighter turns, more speed favoring track, speed rules at Pimlico. Was that the 70s and 80s or is that still today? That was the 70s and 80s. We've had one horse break from the rail. I think it's now 50 Preaknesses that won from the rail. It's an astronomical uh, figure and there haven't been that many wire to wire winners either. You know, I work here but the track maintenance crew does a great job and very even surface by and large. Again, it can change from year to year, race to race, weather forecast to weather forecast, but as far as these, you know, general presumptions out there, I don't put a lot of stock into it.